Long-term use of GLP-1 receptor agonists for more than a year may raise the chance of developing thyroid cancer. Oops. Well, if you are taking one of the diabetes medications like, what are they, right, GLP-1 agents? Ozempic, Trulucity, Victoza, Rebelsis, Mungero, Genevia, Trajenta, Genemet, Gentaduido, whatever. You will want to know about a new study showing that certain patients may be at risk for developing thyroid cancer on these agents. Now, it's important to understand the implications from this study, though, and educate yourself. We don't want fear to take over, but rather being informed is the key here when it comes to taking care of your, our bodies, right? When you're on any medication. It's not intended to tell you, I'm not telling you to stop your medication. I'm giving you information that you can take to your doctor if you are concerned about it. Now, who am I? Well, I'm an endocrinologist. Duh. Well, uh, my name is Ahmed Ergin, and I do and love diabetes a lot. And I do a lot of hormonal disorders, but diabetes is my passion. And you are watching Sugar MD channel if you don't know. According to the findings of this study, though, that was published in Diabetes Care, which is a very, very reputable journal. Those who have type 2 diabetes and have been using GLP-1 receptor agonists, the medications I just told you about, for more than a year may have an elevated risk for developing thyroid cancer. Now, we used to say to people that, are you a rat? And they'll say, no, I'm not a rat. Well, then you will not get a cancer. Because studies showed that rats get the cancer. And there is actually a black box warning on the label that I get a lot of questions. Hey, you know, doc, this causes cancer. And I used to say, well, it only showed in rats. We don't really know anything about humans. Now we do. Now, a professor, Dr. Gene Faley, MD, PhD professor, you know, head of the Department of Medical Pharmacology, Toxicology at Montpellier University Hospital in France, along with his colleagues, they say their study, their results suggest that the thyroid cancer risk should be considered with anyone taking GLP-1 receptor agonists. The results suggest that thyroid cancer risk should be in mind, particularly in patients treated with these agents for one to three years. The results of the complementary pharmacovigilance analysis, which made use of the worldwide, like the adverse direct reactions database, they were consistent and they used that data. A GLP-1 receptor agonist use is associated with an increased risk of thyroid carcinoma in people diagnosed with type 2 diabetes taking these medications for one to three years. Now let's talk about the data. How did they collect this data to begin with? The data were, was obtained from a database published in diabetes care and if you look online you can just search for diabetes care glp1 agonist and cancer or thyroid cancer you will find the study i will also leave the link in the description below so please check it out yourself as well now a case control study was performed on the data obtained from the database of France's National Healthcare Insurance System. It's easy in France, right? Because they only have the central system. You know, everybody's data is in the same central system in the United States. Good luck with that. We don't have that. Now, participants had to have type 2 diabetes, right? And had to be on one of the medications. Most of them were on metformin, like sulfonylurea, rapagilinite, uh, alpha glucose inhibitors like acarbose, octose, things like that that, you know, they'd be used in the United States as well. The researchers were able to collect the incident cases of thyroid cancer between years of 2014 and 2018 by collecting data from hospital diagnoses and medical procedures connected with thyroid cancer. And they looked at the people who took GLP-1 agonists versus people who did not take GLP-1 agonists. Now, people who had thyroid cancer were, again, compared to a control participants who did not have thyroid cancer uh, based on their age, gender, and the length of time they had diabetes. So in order to minimize the possibility of backwards causation, researchers 
adopted a waiting period of six months before diagnosing cancer patients. The adults who have taken GLP-1 receptor agonists and DPP-4 inhibitors, which are Genevia and Trigenta, DPP-4 inhibitors are the ones that are like similar to GLP-1, but not exactly the same, but they end up doing similar things. They were identified by researchers. They identified the length of time that they had used the medications in the six years prior to the lifetime that was determined. People with type 2 diabetes accounted for almost 4 million participants in the trial and 4,400 of them developed thyroid cancer. After removing individuals who had a previous diagnosis of cancer, the researchers reviewed data from 2,500 adults who were diagnosed with thyroid cancer and 45,000 people or patients who did not have the disease. Now, before the lag period, 12% of the thyroid cancer group and 9.6% of the control group were using GLP-1 receptor agonists. And more than 80% of patients in both groups were using either Victoza or some other GLP-1 agents. They had 46% increased risk of developing thyroid cancer compared to those who were not taking those GLP-1 agents. Again, those who used a GLP-1 receptor agonist for one to three years, or maybe even more than three years, had a higher risk of thyroid cancer than those who did not use the medication at all. Adults who had used DPP-4 inhibitors like Genevia or Trigenta inhibitors, or Trigenta, I'm sorry, for more than three years had an elevated risk for thyroid cancer compared to those who did not have drugs. So if you're on GLP-1, your risk goes up after one year. If you're on Genevia or Trigenta, your risk goes up after three years. In addition, the researchers carried out an analysis utilizing the information taken from this pharmacovigilance database that was maintained by WHO between the dates of April 2005 to March 2021. And the purpose of the study was to collect data in order to determine the connections between the use of GLP-1 receptor agonists and the risk of the differential reporting of thyroid cancer in comparison with the use of other diabetes medications. During the course of the investigation, a total of 606 unprompted reports of thyroid cancer associated with the use of GLP-1 receptor agonists were discovered in that study. GLP-1 receptor agonist use, again, was associated with an increased risk of developing any type of thyroid cancer. Now, we used to think that it's only medullary thyroid cancer, but this study showed any type of thyroid cancer in addition to medullary thyroid cancer. Now, at the end, the researchers said the clinicians should be aware of this possible risk, which is thyroid cancer, in commencing a GLP-1 receptor agonist and carefully monitoring exposed individuals or patients, especially when there are additional risk factors, such as thyroid cancer in your family or large some thyroid nodules that don't look good, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you have thyroid nodules and you are seeing an endocrinologist and they biopsied it or they didn't see a need for a biopsy and they're monitoring you, you don't have to freak out, okay? But if you are already a high-risk individuals with some suspicious-looking thyroid nodule, some thyroid cancer in your family, or you're a smoker, or you drink a lot of alcohol, a diabetes is at risk, you know, then you may have to say, okay, let's think about this. Let's make sure that we are not catching a thyroid cancer. Maybe get an ultrasound down the road. If, if you feel something in your neck, you need to be more vigilant, okay? But again, thank you for tuning in and watching today's video about diabetes and cancer. We hope that our insights have been enlightening for some of you and have provided meaningful information to help better understand the correlation between these diseases, between cancer and GLP-1 use. Again, this video is not to tell you to stop your medications, it's to inform you about possible risks. And I would love to hear your thoughts on what we discussed today and your opinions. They matter. And if you have further questions you may have, go ahead and put in the 
the chat, but the comments, right? Now, your feedback is invaluable for many of us. Thanks for being part of the community. Thanks for sharing information. Thanks for sharing this video. And I am looking forward to hearing from you about this topic. And I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, I hope you are enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.